Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. To find out more, visit becomingsomething.com. What's up, podcast world? It's your boy, JP, in the podcast studio with Kathy. Hey. <laughs> and Nate. What's up, JP? Dude, you got a headache, man. I do, man. I'm not on my A game. Pray for which, your boy. Long which, night drinking. Which okay. really means like an A-plus game for anybody else. Oh, but no. <laughs> This wow. could be your Michael Jordan this is why podcast. You have a there we go. Didn't he play a game with 140 degree? Yeah, yeah. I Michael know Jordan so much about game. sports. Yeah, right. This could be your flu game. You should be a like a sports announcer. Yeah. I know oh my gosh. A lot. You would crush Nate, that. Nate, you would die if I did that. Name. You name. are a sports announcer. I am. I am. It, but what it's if I took a little your bit job? different. People like I come to go to the that. Baylor game. They're like, wait, that's the becoming something guy <laughs> yeah, right. on the big screen. <laughs> It's fun, but I'm I'm not actually announcing sports. I'm just reading ads for like Snickers. So yeah. <laughs> I Snickers. could probably do that part. Taco Bueno. <laughs> yeah, right. Guys, I went to uh, Taco Casa for the first time ever yesterday. Why? It was so bad. Why did you do because that? You were old. You're too old. So for that. I got this That's gift card. I got this gift card, and I was like, Classic. "Well, I got to go there at some point." Who gave you a gift yeah, card I to Taco know. Casa? To uh, an organization. I went. To a golf thing, and there was a gift card. So anyway, that's what you do in ministry. You just play golf, right? Exactly. And it was like, it was like what I had in like third grade for Mm. lunch at the cafeteria. And there was like a long line. I'm like, who eats at these places? People love it. I know. I don't know. People say that eat at Taco Bell and which. Hey, I will sign up for Taco Taco Bell. Bell. Yeah, yeah. Taco Bell, I feel like is at least tastes good. Right. And it's good for you. Exactly. Don't believe what Maybe mainstream you media is. What's your right like now. any fast yeah, food? True. What's your fast food go to? Well, Chick Fil A. Yeah, I don't. Does Does Chipotle count? Chipotle, fast Mexican food. That's where I go. Come on. Mm. Mm. You don't like those? No, no, it's fine. Oh. What about What's you? yours? I like Chick Fil A. Uh, fast food. Hmm. I'm not sure. I like jumbo Chinese buffets. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to go to your that's favorite. That's my speed. That's my go-to. Unbelievable. So if, you, if you could go, if you could eat anywhere in the world, like you get, had a gift card to any place mm. for one meal, your meal's comped, where would you want it to? We don't know fancy enough restaurants. <laughs> Nate and I eat at Chewy's. We're not in your circles, man. <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't tell you the nicest restaurant I've been to. I mean, I probably could. It's probably in Waco. So, $100 so here, meal. Here's like a really hot take I really haven't told many people. I don't really like steak. What? Yeah. Well, it's like somebody told me this once. They were like, barbecue is is like really good steak. And that stayed with me. I was like, oh, man, it does. It is like meat and it tastes better. Yeah. And it's, uh, and it's cheaper. Totally. Um, yeah. I Which, love steak. I do too. Like I love steakhouse no, is my favorite. I love steak too. I I really do. I love steak, but as far as like pound for pound on taste, like barbecue. And barbecue granted, I know you're listening from all over. All We're talking day. about Texas barbecue. Yeah. We're not talking about. Yeah, it sits with you because it's like rich in flavor. It just you feel it. The and rest you smell of the day. it for the rest of the you, day. You, you smell great. like meat. Okay, I have my answer. Panda Express. I actually no. knew you were about down. to say that. I I like love Panda Express. That's, I don't go. Do you there like it better than Payways? I well, Payway we don't have one so here, so I like don't even know. Oh, like, we have I know one here exists. now. What? Yeah. What? Look, here, I'll show you. I don't know if I can pull this up fast enough for well, the podcast. Isn't it? Isn't it? P. F. Chang. It's like... called Payway. It is written the same, and yet it is not Payway. Oh. And it's, it, and it's Un- where Payway was. Believable? No, no, no. It's not where Payway was. No, it's in the mall, and it says Payway oh. in the same font, and yet it is not. Payway. I couldn't believe it. We need it. to sue them know. It's, right it's, now for I think all their words. It was just on my Instagram. I didn't I didn't take an actual picture. You know, I just filmed it on Instagram. Hey, hey if you are a lawyer, contact us. I'm I'm ready to sue them. Well, I had a lawyer look at it just purely out of curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I do for fun. And uh and they said that like payway is evidently a really common phrase and so there's a lot of them and you wow. it's hard to 
it's hard to pursue the copyright infringement. That's confusing. Yeah, because it, it means... Uh, yeah, what's it mean, Nate? We looked it up, but it was, it meant something that you would never guess. I can't remember now. Content or something like sunshine that. Sunshine is coming. Sunshine <laughs> is coming. <laughs> is that like a fortune cookie or something? Aww. Man, you, JP, you need like a circle of friends around you to like guard you from eating at the mall. It's like. Yeah. I love the mall. I know. We, and you need help. You need, like you need help. Like, yeah, you're the one who ate you're it. You're the one that needs help. Uh, where'd you say Taco Casa? Taco Casa. <laughs> Just yeah, because man. it's free doesn't mean you have to. I, eat ha- it. I literally have to. I just need to. you to know that. No, I, if I, I, I have to. Yeah. I'm gonna get you McDonald's gift cards for your birthday. Oh, that would stink. <laughs> you, would, you don't like McDonald's? You take well, hey, I, I like the They're what are the, what, are, what are the nuggets called? Big nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> a chicken nugget. Those are good. <laughs> what are you doing with your hand? That was the, know, the this is the ne- international hand nugget. signal for <laughs> chicken nugget. <laughs> anyway, like you just need people, man. You're just like living on your own, and it's not going well. Nate, I agree. I need better friends. <laughs> like I agree. I need better podcast you hosts. You need to replace us. We need to do a national search for the becoming something like podcast co-host. So, what would you be looking for in a friend? Because uh, I, I just feel like today we could talk about community. Diligence, wow. uh, sense of humor, fun-loving, kind, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, like goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, honestly. self-control. I, I mean, I feel like I'm describing you. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I am struggling today. <laughs> You're just going to put like make it harder on me? It's because you stayed up all night drinking, <laughs> yeah. and I think you need to confess it. Hey, there are no rules when you're. Oh, what's what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you quoting? Oh, there, there are no I'm rules when right there now. are no laws when you're drinking claws. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> A person on staff said <laughs> there that are 10 no ago. rules when you're. Wait, what? Drink. <laughs> We do not endorse alcohol and here he on this podcast. He was not drinking last he was not night. A worship night. I, yeah, that I was, was a joke. I was. He was worshiping. He's hung over on the Holy Spirit. But I think in your in your young adult years, like it, it can be really hard. One of the one of the hardest things is leaving college, where you're living with friends. You go live in a different city, yeah. and it's like, man, I'm alone, and I like go to a bar to try to meet people and go to church, and like they're yeah. all kind of weird, and it's like I I don't have my people. So we're talking about community. Community, community. is that it? So yeah. like community is like. In context of the church in 2022, home group, small group, cell group, uh, what other? Life groups is Life what we group. Call oh, yeah, <laughs> we call it. <laughs> life groups, community groups. So groups, right? Group life. And I think it's hard to talk about because every a, a lot of different churches have a different kind of local expression about this. So I don't think we're necessarily talking about the program within your church. We're talking about doing life with other believers, which is something I pray for my children every day. Lord, would you give them, Mm -hmm. please, would you give them friends that know you and love you? And I pray, God, would you give them, put people in their lives that know them and love you and love them and know you? And so this, this is this really consistent idea in the scripture. It says in Galatians 6 that there, everyone has a burden that they have to carry and everyone has a burden that they have to share. That means that you will have things in life that you cannot carry by yourself. So people will say, oh, God won't give you more than you can handle. God's going to constantly give you more than you can handle. He just won't give you more than he can handle, and he won't give you, uh, he will give you more than you can handle at times so that you can share that burden with other people, that they can come alongside you and help you carry it. So that's Galatians 6, Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 says, do not forsake the gathering together as some are in the habit of doing, but Continue to encourage each other all the more as you see the day approaching. Like we talked about this morning, even in staff prayer, that we have to have people in our lives that are constantly reminding us that we're not there yet. We're not home yet. And I think about in those marathons, those runners, they're they're they you know, they're they're like on mile seven, uh, they're they're tired. And you have those people, like their family shows up on the side of the road, they make those those signs like, you can do it, Dad, and they hand you a cup of Gatorade or something like, keep going, keep going. Like we have to have people in our lives, the 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 saints that were surrounded, the, cl- the great cloud of witnesses, the author of Hebrews talks about, just to say, hey, you're not there yet, keep going, stay at it. And so that is what we're calling community. And really, community isn't something that we're making up. 
like we talked about this morning, our first glimpse of community in the Bible is in Genesis 1, when you see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit working together to create and fill the earth. Yeah, he says, he says so there's this rhythm in Genesis, God, God said it, it was, and it was good. God said it, it was, and it was good. God said it, it was, and it was good. Then he made man, and he, he made man, it says, in our image. So you see the, the plurality of the Trinity mm-hmm. there, the relationship would be a more theologically accurate way to say that like the relationship of the trinity there making man in his image to uh to exist in community and then he says there's a break in this rhythm it says and he, and something was not good right. and that's that he was alone and it was not good for man to be alone and so we were not made for isolation and i think this becomes more complex in the age of social media where we have you know a hundred thousand friends but but very few relationships, like very pe- few people that we can experience fellowship with. People give me, like I know it's like, okay, boomer, that I'm like, I hate when someone texts me to and they say, hey, can I call you at three? Yeah, I've learned like, that. Like this is a new thing, man. Like people text you and they say, hey, can I call you at three? And I'm like, dude, I don't know if you can call me at three <laughs> or not. Call me at three. See what happens. And if I answer, it's fine. And if I don't answer, and like, so I, I post this on Friday Q&A and people are like, oh, I actually like people to text me beforehand because they give me a heads up and I know that I'll be free. I was like, you don't have to answer the phone. You know, it's okay to like, like for someone to call you and and you'd be like, oh, I can't talk right now, so I'm not going to answer, but I'll call you back. Like that's old school. But I, th- and you're like, why do you care about this? Because I think it has implications for like how far we've come from just like natural relationships. Yeah. That are relationships that they have to be so formalized. Like it's like, I need to schedule, like I don't, you don't schedule times to talk to friends. If I'm calling a friend, I call you. I don't care if it's three in the morning. If you're a friend, I'm going to call you. And if you can't talk, you don't answer. People also like don't just schedule that. They like schedule their hangouts, right? Like I'll yeah. see girls and like, oh, we should hang out. And it's not like this natural thing. It's like, let me put you on the calendar five Thursdays from now. We have a brief oh, one hour it. window man, and we I can get it. together. I'm like, knock on my door. Man. Yeah. Like, just come over. Like, just show up. If, and I'll be like, oh, hey, what's up? Oh, come on in. Or I'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry. You're interrupting dinner and I'm going to die back in with my family. And that's okay. I think there's this weird thing where, like, we're, we're getting really afraid of rejection and it, we're just getting weird relationally. Uh-huh. I think, like, video games and social media yeah. are doing this to yeah. us. And the community is it's i think the enemy i think satan is attacking the concept of community didn't we like read some study or i learned something that like freshmen in college now are getting like less into quote unquote dangerous activities like they're having less sex they're drinking less they're going to less parties which i guess those are really good things you guess i, I <laughs> they are really good i things. guess but going on less dates the, but it's the, the, the implication this, is it's a symptom it's of something bad they're in their rooms on their phones just scrolling social media or staying isolated and they might have a lot of friends on instagram but they don't have any actual real life friends so i think it's you, a real you heard real it here first folks epidemic. if you are having less premarital <laughs> sex and yes. getting drunk less Less, it might be a good thing <laughs> guys you know what i mean though it makes me sad the, like i want people to just it makes you sad out. that they're no, having less okay, premarital no. sex oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh man no, i'm happy about that but i also i see a lot but of people in awkward man. relationships <laughs> seriously like i see people not knowing how to talk that's to a each good other way. that's a good word they're like in the lobby before a service and they're just if they didn't come with someone they're on their phones we're getting more socially awkward yeah we are yeah, I, I think we're, we're, we have less tolerance for people. Okay, what do you mean by that? That's what I think it is, is I think it's like, I mean, there's people that they're like, oh, I hate to talk on the phone. I'm like, I wonder if that's because you have less tolerance for people. Like we've outsourced relationships and communication to like digital. Oh, interesting. To technology. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And I don't, I, yeah, it's different than the life on life that I see in the scripture. Like, like you know, one of the you know what 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 is, what do you think one of the greatest evangelism tools is? Courage. Oh. <laughs> Courage is necessary. Friendship, like people, yeah. relationships. I think I think it's the table. 
Yeah. Like that's one of the greatest evangelism yeah. tools is the table. Like you have, like, like you like, invite people to your table. If you're like, hey, if I throw this at you and you die, <laughs> where are you going? You're, you're that's, dumb. That's where you went. Hey, you feel free to like sit yeah. today out. I know you got a headache. <laughs> like truly. It's okay. We're, just, we're doing okay. To, yeah, feel free to just doing take, great. take today off if you want, man. Uh, I know you don't have your A game, so it's okay, man. Just chill. Hey, every day is a day off in my life. That's no, right. No, this is good. Go back to the table. Yeah, so I think just like having, like that's so what you it, see. So if it like, <laughs> blow it. <laughs> I, was looking at, I was looking at JP. Uh, you have, like you invite people into your home to your table. And, and so it's like just this life on life fellowship, koinonia. And like, I think we're losing that. That's what you see in Acts 2. Yeah. And the church explodes right they shared meals together they were in each other's homes yeah. and the church just blew up yeah and so let's just like simplify this idea because i don't want to i don't want to stay in this like nebulous ethereal like oh community like every believer should and i know should is a heavy word because it you know it feels like a heavy yoke but no it's i think it's life-giving it's it's people to share your burdens with every believer should have other believers around them that they're meeting with consistently. Mm -hmm. And so, and people are like, well, my church doesn't offer community groups. It's like, you don't need your church to offer community yeah. groups. Like you can call the, the two or three or four or five or six strongest believers in your life and say, hey, can we meet at this coffee shop every Thursday at you know 7 a.m. You just need like a time, a place, and a plan, right? You can do that. Like everyone can facilitate that for themselves, whether your church offers it or not. And I know for some of you, like the way that your church does community is more Sunday school. Others of you, it's more supper club. The way that we do it here at Harris Creek is like we meet on a consistent basis and we ask each other three questions. And those those questions, they're, they're around like the word feed. So it, in, in, in its simple way, it's input, output, confession. So the way that we ask is, how did you feed your faith? Or how did you feed your relationship with Jesus, right? How did you feed others? And how did you feed your flesh? Those are the three questions. Mm -hmm. How did you feed your faith? How did you feed others? How did you feed... Uh, your flesh and so that's the input is how do you feed your faith like what did you what what are you reading right now what are you listening to uh, what what is feeding your relationship with Jesus like what are you doing that's stirring your affections for Jesus right now um, how did you feed others that's discipleship and evangelism when have you been around others this week where you've had Jesus on your heart like he was the topic of conversation whether you're either sharing the gospel with someone who doesn't know Christ or you're sitting with people and you're it's, you're experiencing discipleship where you're having like faith centered found uh, conversations right where is that happening and then how did you feed your flesh that's confession mm -hmm. like this is James 5:16 confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed for the prayers of a righteous person are powerful and effective and so that's this, the practice that the church has practiced for centuries, really a millennia now, of what does it look like for us to confess our sins and to pray for each other? And so like if I, if I meet with my guys and we do that, right, I go and I say, hey, this is, I'm reading Romans 8 right now. I just listened to this podcast and I'm, and I'm reading this book over here. Uh, I'm, I, I got to share with my server on Tuesday and then yesterday I had this face center conversation that I'm meeting with these guys Thursday morning. And then, uh, hey, I, you know, I was I was on Instagram and and I you know saw this this picture over here that that caused me to uh, or not caused me to, but I I, I struggle with lust in that moment. I um, I was short with Monica. I you know um, I bought something that I didn't need on Amazon, and so this is how I fed my flesh. And then the next person would pray for me. Right, and they would say like, "Lord, would you you know please remove those images? Would you please strengthen his marriage? Would you please help him to be kind, filled with the Spirit?" And then they would go, mm -hmm. and they would say, "Input, mm -hmm. output, confession. Here's how I, I fled. Here's how I fed my faith. Here's how I fed others. And then here's how I fed my flesh." That practice has yeah. changed my life. I believe it. Like we've been in a small group for maybe eight or nine years, and before you came, we talked about the sermon, we talked about life, highs and lows, and I thought it was good. Like I thought I knew these people, I yeah. thought they knew me, I thought we were challenging each other, and then three and a half years ago, we started answering those three yeah. questions, and it was awkward at first. I had never practiced confessing my sins to other people. I thought that was something just Catholics yeah. did. It like was kind of weird, and it took like the bravest person going first. But man, that practice has changed my life. So if you're not 
not in the practice of confessing sins, of answering those three questions. They're not magic. Like I'm sure there's other good questions out there, sure. but they they cover it. Yeah, I didn't come up with them. I, my, I, the first time I heard it was from my, from my friend John Elmore. And uh, and so we started practicing. So we were in community together, and we started practicing that. And I saw just saw a lot of fruit from it. And so yep. then we took the entire church that direction, and then we moved to Waco and, and cast here. a vision again for that. I think it's consistent with the heart of God, consistent with the scriptures. But I will just say, like, community's stinking hard. Yeah. Like, it's. I think everybody's looking for the perfect group. Like, they're looking for the perfect mate and perfect spouse. And, and like in perfect friendship and and friendships are not found they're forged mm -hmm. like the, like community real community happens on the other side of lots of conflict yes that's the truth like real friendships happen on the other side of trauma on the other side of hurts on the other side of like hey I just we just went through a miscarriage we we just went through a breakup my 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 father just died like on the other side of those things like that's where really deep friendships happen Happen. And so how do you be a good friend to someone? One, it takes a lot of humility. And two, I just say, show up. Mm -hmm. Like, show up, meet a need, love them, care for them. Like Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Like, look for opportunities to love those. All the time, I talk to young young adults that are like, yeah, I just don't feel like my friends are good. Friend, Like, like they go out without me. They do this without me. Like, nobody called me on my birthday. Mm -hmm. Nobody did this. And I'm always like, what are you doing yeah. to invest in those relationships? Because you have such a victim mentality right. that I'm not surprised nobody really wants to be your friend. And I don't mean to be so harsh there, but I don't know who's going to tell you this. Like, you're going through life seeing yourself as the victim at every turn. And what's really sad as I say this is the people that need to hear it the most won't hear it. And and some of you are like, oh man, I, w I wish so-and-so would hear that. And they really need to hear that. That's so true of them. And it's like the people that need to hear it the most won't hear it. So, But all those questions, like that sounds kind of horrible. Like I would rather just hang out with friends and like talk about sports. Or stay something. in the shallow end. Yeah, like, like well, how, how do you- A how lot you... of people think that. And, and a lot it, but, of friendships but I feel like stay that's shallow. what friendships are about are about like common interests yeah and like how do you, i don't know how do you go from hanging out with a two guys to talking about the game to being like so did you sin last week like you know like i have my like so my son right now he's at this age where like all he wants he's a 10 year old all he really wants to do is have fun yeah and and i'm trying to think as his dad like how do i show him that like he doesn't want to come home and do his homework he wants to come home and like you know, drive his RC car or, or play a video game. And, and then it's like, he says at the end of the night, it's like, Hey, I just don't feel like there's enough time. You know, I have to do homework. I, 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 it's not like I want, I just want to have fun. And I'm trying to say like, like life is not that, like there are those moments, but really to, to live life to its fullest is, is to realize like there are those moments that are sweet, but if those sweet moments were all the time, they wouldn't be as sweet. And, and what makes those sweet moments sweet is, is also hard moments. Well, I think relationships are similar. And it's like there are there is a time to sit and talk about sports, have fun, sit around a campfire, you know, to go to the beach together. Like those, that's vacation, right? But that's not every moment. the The real moments are, man, I had a really hard conversation with my boss today, and I don't have anyone to process that with. Yeah. Uh, I'm 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 going to struggle to pay rent this month, and I don't know who can help me. Um, man, my my parents, my relationship with my parents is so hard. My relationship with my siblings is so hard in this season. Who can give me wisdom to help me navigate that? Like you need that wise counsel. There's about 16 proverbs that say some form, this is a paraphrase, but some form of wisdom comes from the counsel of many. Without plans, uh, with, without counselors, plans fail, you know, or but in abundance of counselors, they succeed. What does it look like for me to have that, uh, you know, Psalm 1, walk with the wise and become wise, that don't, don't sit in the seat of scoffers, right? What does it look like for me to have this wise counsel around me? And I think that's a big mm -hmm. benefit of community. So when you're like, hey, that sounds terrible, I'm like, it sounds necessary. Mm -hmm. Like if all you had was shallow conversations to talk about sports, you're not really living life. Yeah. You're, you're, you're staying shallow. If there's no, there's no sustenance to it. And how good of God to know that we would need help 
like he knows us. He created us. He knows that we're going to need help following him. He knows that the road is narrow that leads to life. Few find it, that we need other people to help be a guide to us, to encourage us, to, to pick us up when we fall, to bear our burdens. And so that's why I'm like, if God knows community is important because he himself is community, he made us in his image because he knew that we were going to need help following him. Yeah. So let me it's give important. You- let me give you something really practical. If you find yourself in a place where it's like, hey, people aren't committed, they're not showing up, you know, I, I don't really feel like we're, we're doing this well. You know, I said you need a time, a place, and a plan, you know, to, to, to ex- begin to experience community. And you guys should see each other outside, like pursue each other outside the group. Like have the group text, hey, this is what I'm praying for you today. Mm-hmm. Hey, who wants to go to dinner with me? Hey, I'm going to the Super Bowl party. Do you guys want to go? Like those, hey, I'm going shopping. I'm gonna, I need a dress. Do you ladies want to go with me? Like you got to look for those opportunities. Hey, Stop. Okay. Okay. And so, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And so, um, all right. If you find yourself in that place where you you're struggling, right? You need to have a DTR. And so you just show up and you say, "All right, guys, I think I think our commitment is waning. Are we still up for this? What are we willing to miss for?" And so like with our group, we talk about, hey, you'd miss group for what you'd miss work for. So like yeah. if you're sick, sure. But if it's just like your game is on, you're probably not going to take off work for that. So it's like, what would you miss work for? That's what we're, we're going to hold this gathering at that level of commitment. So much so like we, we're going to, you know, schedule um, like vacations around this if we can, like or travel around this. Like if I, if, if we're meeting on Tuesday and I can choose to meet, to leave Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm going to leave Wednesday so that I can make sure that I hold this gathering in a, as a high priority. And so you just DTR, everybody goes around like, Hey, are we still up for this? What do we want to get in this group? And then that accountability piece is yeah. hard. And, and so I just say, Hey, do you want me speaking into your life? Mm-hmm. Like when, when the Proverbs twenty seven seventeen says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Am I, do I have the right to sharpen you in this area? And I don't want to just be wielding iron and like cutting you to pieces. I want to be asking you good questions and helping you grow in this way. And so just to have this like, Hey, are we all on the same mm-hmm. page? That conversation will save you a lot of strife. And so, like, give everybody a heads up. Hey, today, when we show up today, tonight, or in the morning, I'm going to ask you guys, are we still up for this? And get everybody's buy-in. That's really that's really good. So how do you grow in, like, socially unawkwardness? It's like, you, you two are good around people, and it's it's easy for you guys to say that, but Dude, it's like, you're man, gonna, you'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> you'll We've get got there. a few tips for you specifically. Well, but. Well, what if it's like, man, I just honestly feel way more comfortable with my phone than, like, with another person like how, what do you what do you do you just have to initiate you have to put yourself out there and a lot of people around you are lonely like i think that's what this generation doesn't realize because you look on social media and they have a million friends and it looks like they're at all these cool events and parties and so you're like oh everyone has something that i don't have but n- no Spoiler alert, everyone around you, for the most part, is probably lonely and is looking for deeper community. They might have friendship, but they don't have community. And so you can change that, not just for yourself, but for other people. And that just takes you going first, going up to someone, hey, can we go to lunch? I I think you're cool. I actually heard someone did that the other day, that she went up to someone and she's like, hey, we're in the same age group. I like hear the best things about you. I'm looking for more friends. Do you want to go to lunch? I'm like, yeah, you might think that's awkward in your head, but the other person is secretly wanting you to do that. They're wanting someone to reach out so that they feel seen and they feel like there's someone that cares about them. So just be that person, go first, and you probably will get more like welcome response than you would any kind of rejection. And it is it's hard. Like our family moved to Waco, right? And and so we're the new people in town. Everyone has, you know, existing yeah. relationships. And, and it, it's you, you, I'm sitting there thinking like, Hey, who do we want to invest yeah. in? And are we, are we getting, are they going to let us in their little friend group? Like, <laughs> you know, they have other people to have dinner with. And so it, it is like, you have to put yourself out there. Uh, you, you have to face the possibility of rejection mm-hmm. and all of that is necessary to growing up. It's like, I would tell my 10 year old, Hey, you can't just have fun every day when you get home from school. Like, like, if you did, it wouldn't be fun anymore. You know, like, like that that video game is going to take from you. At some point, you're going to grow addicted to it, 
and and it's not even you're not even going to have fun playing it anymore. It's just going to be like a job. And so um, I I think in the same way you have to take risks. You have to ask. You have to put yourself out there. You have to get beyond like, hey, that's not my personality, and mm-hmm. go for it. You know, we say in dating you should like run really hard after Jesus and then just look to the left, look to the right, find someone there, grab them, ask them on a date. I kind of think we should view friendships in the same way. Like, I think we should just be running really hard after Jesus and you should just look to the left and right and be like, who else is chasing him this hard? Because the people that you let into that inner circle, they're going to have a voice into your life, right? Bob Goff says, like, be careful who you give the microphone into your life. To. Yeah. And I'm like, that's what you're doing with community is you're, you're choosing or you're picking or you're like linking arms with people who will make you more like Christ. Yeah. And so if you can, if you're not already in a community group, like look for those people who are serving and running hard after Jesus and then grab them. You become the average of your five closest yep. friends. Like that's, that's just reality. Like it's almost like somehow like God created the world that way. And I think it's because we were made to belong to the body of Christ, the church. And, and so, like, especially if you go to a mega church, like, you have to have that smaller group of people that you're fellowshipping with, that you're taking communion with, you know, that you're eating with, that you're reading God's Word with, you're growing with. So you're not going to do that in the context of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Like, that's great to go on Sunday and be reminded of who God is and remember what He's done for you. But then you have to break off into the smaller groups and experience that, like, home church feel like they did in the first century and so uh if you look around and your five closest friends aren't the strongest believers in jesus that you know i would change your five closest friends Mm -hmm. and and like yes i just said that and yes it's a thoughtful statement and yes i mean it well didn't jesus hang out with sinners Mm -hmm. jesus hung out with the disciples and he did ministry to sinners like he would eat with them but then he would move on he'd say hey come with me if you want you know, but I'm I'm moving on to do the Lord's work. So you want to have the the closest people to you, the ones that you're doing the Lord's work with. And if the closest people to you aren't people you're doing the Lord's work with, then you're probably not doing the Lord's work. That's reality. Mm-hmm. Okay, that you're probably not living on mission. And so make sure that you have people that you're locked arms with that you're doing God's work with. And. Yeah. Like Jesus was perfect and anyone he would have hung out with as a sinner, right? We don't have that option. Like we're all sinners hanging out with sinners. And so the last thing I would add about community is that it's going to be messy. Like it's going to be imperfect. You mentioned conflict earlier. You're going to have a ton of conflict. It's going to be hard. You're not going to want to go to life group and you still have to go. And I would just encourage you to like push in and lean into the messy because that's like where life happens. Yeah. I feel like your headache ruined this episode. <laughs> I feel like we tried really no, hard. I feel but... like y'all carried us <laughs> for Man. once. Oh Man. my! Seriously, just my back there. doesn't hurt. Finally, just sitting there. You do not get paid for today. To be clear, <laughs> oh, hey, okay. that's, that's it's fine. like you need to take a P- <laughs> I'm, uh, I'll get you a taco PTO. Card, though. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I think that's what it was. Man, did you finish the gift card, or do you have to go back? Uh, no, yeah, I finished it. Okay, good. Yeah, good. So you had to pay some out of pocket. Well, no, so. No, what was interesting was it was like four fifty, and I had five dollars, and they just like took it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh wow! <laughs> Which I was like, whatever. I Wait, like, you can for four dollars and fifty cents. You, you probably got twenty seven tacos for <laughs> four fifty. I think that's why people go there, which is great. Oh, Quantity. Good for them. Yeah, which is great. But All right. uh, yeah. All right, guys, you heard it here first. This episode is sponsored by Taco <laughs> Casa. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Becoming Something, where we promise to keep the conversation honest and real for young adults in their 20s and 30s. Every moment we live is training for a future moment, and that's why we do this podcast, because we want you to be prepared for everything that life is going to throw at you. Our hope with this podcast is that it would help you become all that God desires you to be. To find out more, visit becomingsomething.com.